Welcome to the Art of Money podcast with Art McPherson. And this is the Art of Money podcast with Art McPherson and Luke McCarty, artofmoneyradio.com for more information on the McPherson Financial Group or to schedule that initial complimentary consultation. We appreciate you listening. Now, let's get to the show. Art McPherson, Coach Julie, how are y'all doing this beautiful weekend? We're doing well. We just got done with Easter weekend. We had some family come in, which was nice. We have family on the west coast of Florida. And then Julie's brother is in the area, but she, he had some of his wife's family come in town. So we had a little bit of a group of us for Easter. So you say Easter. we just got done celebrating them about a week removed from Easter. Like, did they just finally leave? Did you finally get up at the end of the week? No, they didn't. Like, have, they didn't stay with us. They just came over. Half. It's time to no, go. No, they came over. They came Actually, over. Actually, yes, except for my niece and her husband, the ones on the West Coast. The others all do live around us. Gotcha. So all right. They weren't just visiting. And guess what, Miss Coach Julie's taking up now? What pickleball? What am I taking up? Golf. Oh. So we went and hit balls for the first time this week. No. That's all. I'm. I'm. I'm not being. I, I'm jealous. I wish my. I wish Gretchen would just have any desire to even just ride in the cart with me, and she refuses to. Well, riding in the cart and driving the cart are totally different. Let her drive. Fine. If she would come with me, the very the what three times, and we've been together for what thirteen years that she's come with me. The three times she just watches me play, and she goes, "Did you mean to put it there?" <laughs> okay, so you're the one that doesn't want her with yeah, you. I'm like, either you're going to play or you're going to sit in the cart and drink, but you're not going to heckle me. <laughs> That's you mean funny. when it goes in the bushes? So are you going to be able to hit it out of there okay? Or do you need, what do they call it, a drop? Do you need another, what's it, a mulligan? How does this work? Do you count that? Why don't you go back to the Aren't clubhouse? Aren't you up to like 12 by now? Don't you have somewhere to be? You know what? Is double digits what? good? Is this like baseball? The higher the score, the better? Well, so <laughs> When I play, yes. <laughs> so why why do you want her to play? Is it because then you can heckle her back? Damn or because straight. She... <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, is it, honey? <laughs> How's her swing uh, art? Is uh, Julie starting to pick it up? Or I mean, you've played... The, you're not new to the game, Julie. I just pick it up every what? 10 years. <laughs> yeah, like the last time she had picked it up was when we went to Ireland. In 2014. Okay. And that was the first so time I ever years. saw her swing a club. And she did it at the Ireland, um, where they play the Ireland Championship right? every year. In Killarney. Yeah. We played at Killarney, <laughs> and uh, she was hilarious, but she actually hit the ball pretty well. And then if she didn't hit it well, she goes, the course owes me. I'm taking this hole <laughs> <The> off. course <laughs> owes me. <laughs> yes. Wow, that is a Julie that's Mulligan the way, right there. Yeah, that's the way to not get no, stressed out. No, she just out. didn't even play the hole. She I didn't just play the hole. Yeah. I didn't take a score on it. Yeah, she just said, the course owes me. You I'm took, taking this hole off. You took a mental health break while playing. <laughs> yes. I did. Yeah, she I did. did. <laughs> I, don't, let, don't let people get you know built up behind us that now I'm stressed out because they're waiting for me. So let's just play along. Can just I, move th- along. And, and thank you for that, uh, Julie. Can I tell you this? As, as someone who is learning to play golf as you are, and then let's say you go out with your friends and everyone's learning together, we got behind a group of females that played. This was about a month, month and a half ago. They didn't like the game. They were just there as a social event, taking four <laughs> or five swings on each ball. They oh, swing no. it. They top it about five yards. <laughs> oh, that was silly. Let's take a selfie. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Okay, that's going to ruin everybody's golf day. We that's for sure. We had to call the Ranger three times. <laughs> and they were just. Why didn't you just go through and say, hey, can we go through? We were having, they were having the time of their life. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, they were cute, so it was fun to watch. But still, uh, the point, the truth, the point the truth is, comes out. that four hour round took at least eight hours. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yikes. So uh, this week at about a week removed from the Masters, did you get a chance to watch all of it or are you just... We, all of it through all the rain, through the trees falling yeah, down. Yeah, right? Whoa. How that was wild. But as we're watching the little bit that they did show and the chainsaws were out there, I said to Art, I go, you know, come tomorrow, you're never even going to know that any trees were there. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, everything will be gone. It'll, It'll be, be sheer perfection. I am amazed they didn't mulch those trees, put them in baggies, put an Augusta National sticker on them and sell them for 200 bucks a bag in the right? clubhouse. <laughs> because they don't need to do that, Mark. <laughs> Did you see that meme that they would make over a million dollars an hour in the clubhouse? 
or Masters no, Weekend. I did not see that. Oh, you but mean I by all just the uh, revenue from the gift shop? Yeah. I um, would believe it because, because the I only place you can year, buy is at the gift shop. Gift yep. shop. I remember last year we sat, we stood in line for how long, and it was like a cattle shoot, like we were at Disney waiting to go on the yep. ride. It's the same thing, like a Disney line. Mm-hmm. They Augusta National made over seventy million dollars last it. weekend. They said wow. that one patron. You're not allowed to call them fans. You have to call them patrons. One patron spent over thirty eight thousand dollars in one purchase on site. You know site. why? That's because everybody says, oh, you're going? Get me this, get me that, get me that. And so he probably bought for his whole neighborhood. That's true. Well, $38,000, he probably bought a very rare putter or something memorabilia. Or a bag of tree that fell the mulch from the tree. (laughs) Or shirts for the whole neighborhood. Can you buy that? Are there like rare putters for sale? Mm -hmm. I mean, I imagine, I've never been inside that. Yeah, I know, there are. Like what was the most expensive item that you saw? I didn't let him look at that grand, stuff. <laughs> about five thousand dollars. It was like it was a rare putter, so it was like a a putter used by like Ben Hogan or something like that. I love Julie's like I know Art, I know his limitations. He's gonna walk out and be like, "This is an Arnold Palmer three iron." Listen, I'm honey, like, it was only twenty two thousand dollars. <laughs> nope, but he used this on number six to get a par. Does not matter. <laughs> I know when my mom and I were looking in the women's section, I'm like, wait, where's Art? And I had to walk over, like link arms with him, and it is packed in there. Mm-hmm. Link arms with him, and I'm like, let's go. You're staying with me. <laughs> it's, it's like a golfer's Toys R Us. <laughs> that yes. is true. Yeah. Yes. That Th- is true. This weekend, are you playing golf at all this weekend, Julie, Art? No, we're going to a wedding. Okay. Well, you know what? Actually, that's not a bad thing. This weekend <laughs> is traditionally the busiest weekend for golf courses because across it's the after, country. Because it's after watching the Masters. Amen. Yep. That's it. I had a buddy of mine that ran a course up here in Atlanta, and he said that the, just, all right, gear up. It's our Christmas. He goes, Masters <laughs> weekend is a little busy, but the weekend, everybody else thinks they're the next Tiger, they're the next <laughs> Phil, they're the next John Rom. The next John Rom. Yep. They all come out in their $300 Nike, I mean, fit to the T, looking sharp. They spend $1,000 on clubs and balls, and then they shank every single one of them. And, and then, then after, they hang it up. And then after 17, <laughs> they never play again until next year. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So get ready if you've got tea time this week and give yourself plenty of time. John Rom, you know what he walked away with? 3.5-ish. $3.24 million. Nice. Not bad. But My man, what? Phil, though, look, he had the best round of the day. You didn't see. 1.9 million? <laughs> because they, they never didn't show showed it. him. <laughs> yep. Oh. I was kind of rooting for Brooks or Phil just for the drama. Just for so was Art. L-I-V. So was Art. Yes. Oh yeah, he wanted them to be in the top five, all of them. Yeah, and is it me or did Phil look like really Awful. skinny? Awful. Yeah, he looked really skinny. He looks terrible. Is it stress skinny or maybe the stress of live tournament where I don't have to play every single weekend now? Like, did he just know. lose, like, travel so, what, what, so you're saying it's because he's at home more? I, it yeah. could have been because <laughs> his wife found out he had a $40 million gambling debt. I mean, and no. <laughs> no. That's, you know, debatable. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually pulling for Sam Bennett. Oh, the amateur. The amateur. Oh, my gosh. Was he so cute? And the whole story of his father. You know, I'm always the sucker for the stories. And the tattoo that he had of his dad's handwritten note before he passed. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was just awesome. I do he played hope, very well. I hope that a pro pulls him to the side and says, congratulations, kid. You know, you, you, you're a conversation piece to a lot of golfers. You're a household name right now. But you got to speed it up. <laughs> he was right. him and he Patrick Cantlay. So slow. So <laughs> slow. Do you see that one picture of John Rahm and Brooks Kepka and they're waiting, waiting. on? Oh, they were waiting. Yes. God. Like, oh. <laughs> what happens to them too? <laughs> now, in, in Sam's defense, if I'm playing Augusta, you better believe I'm taking my sweet butt time. Right? I, As an amateur. Yep. All right, let me ask a question. I saw this online. I posted all my golfing buddy friends. You get one option to play Augusta National once just once and never again or you get sunday badges for life sunday badges for life because i would work onto the course somehow because <laughs> sunday badges for life is you're always there mm-hmm. then you get to know everybody and then you can meet somebody who's a member and then you can 
you can make it happen. I like how Art is pretty confident in his like schmoozing game. Well, that's how he rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the pictures of all the celebrities? True. True. Yes. What about you, Julie? I know you're just getting involved in the game, but the history, the pageantry of playing Augusta National. I or... don't want to play that course. No way. Why? Because are you kidding? I'd be that one that's doing worm burners everywhere. <laughs> you know I what? would never even make it up the hill Does or it, no. You'd be doing worm burners at Augusta National. They would kick me off after the first hole. At her beginning level is what she means. Then that's what you I mean. would get kicked off the first hole at Augusta National. <laughs> <laughs> they would never let me back in anywhere. That's, you got kicked out of Augusta National. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's about a week removed, but we're just now getting a chance to get caught up on our thoughts from the uh, Masters last weekend. 321-425-8550. Appreciate listening to the Art of Money with Art McPherson this weekend. Artofmoneyradio.com. Hey, Coach, what's going on, not just in the McPherson household, but tell me some of the updates going on with the McPherson Financial Group as well. Anything we need to know? Well, I'm always busy. We are always doing um, client appreciation events, Mm -hmm. and we've got a couple coming up. So busy doing that, getting emails sent out, calling clients to see if they're coming and going to join us. So that's always fun. Nice. Now, how far ahead do y'all plan? Because y'all do some pretty cool events. I know y'all have done some charity golf tournaments. Y'all have done some sporting events. Whole year ahead. (laughs) We 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 actually do a meeting in January and pull out the calendar and we say, okay, we want to do this. And it's like, well, we always have our standing shred event in April with the uh, Earth Day. Very good. And then we have usually do two golfing events. We want to do it in the cool of the fall and the coolness of the winter time. And then we have a, then we always do a movie event in summer because it's too hot to be outside. And Uh then we kind of just fill it in. And a great shred event coming up this month. Tell me, uh, tell me a little bit more about it. It is on Friday the 21st, and we have a food truck and for lunch, and we have a shred truck that is on site, and as our clients pull up, they actually help you take everything out of your vehicle, and they shred it right away, and then they park, and then they, our clients stay and have lunch, and we just mingle and have a great time. Nice. And we have tents and tables. Tents and, and tables and chairs. That way it's not yeah. too warm. You know, it's just nice weather. We usually have a nice breeze. We I'll usually, usually have bring, a birthday cake, too. Yeah, and I'll usually bring one of our cars up. Right now it'll probably be Julie's truck, unless it's still leaking transmission fluid, <laughs> which I was trying to work on on uh, the weekend. Yes. Yeah, we've got a, a cracked uh, transmission line. And about time I, I get the pressure up, yeah, just pours it out of there. Spills it all out. And she has a problem on her radiator fan is not working. I'm not exactly sure why. Mm-hmm. So. so that won't be on site. It starts getting warm. Hey, I noticed you kind of slid that in there, a birthday cake. What for? Birthday cake for my birthday. April 27th. Oh, Earth Day is her yeah. birthday. Actually, the 22nd. The I'm 27th sorry. is her anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> I always do that. I always right. get them backwards. Earth Day is my birthday, the 22nd. <laughs> We're shredding sensitive documents. We're yes. having some lunch. Uh, well, there may or may not be a classic car on site. We're celebrating <laughs> birthdays. And right. can we bring our pitching wedge and maybe, Julie, maybe do right. a little pitch pitching contest while we're out there? Yeah, sure. No, um, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> we do have room for like a little 50-yard shot. There you go. I'm just saying. All right, these are some of the great events that the team at the McPherson Financial Group, they do throughout the year to help serve the community and their clients as well. Three, two, one. 425-8550. Again, 321-425-8550. For more information about the McPherson Financial Group, we're always online, artofmoneyradio.com. You can schedule that complimentary consultation from the comfort of your home and just a few clicks on your homepage as well, artofmoneyradio.com. All right, I got a hypothetical with you about some 401k situations I want to get your take on. So, Art, take two retirement savers with the same amount of money. They're okay. invested in the same funds. Okay. They've been invested for the same time frame in their 401ks. Okay. Now, you'd think that they're going to have the same results, but why would one outperform the other by almost 10%? Why is Fees. that? Fees. Uh, smaller companies, and we have a lot of them. So small business, and that's typically categorized as a company that has 100 or less employees, When they have their defined benefit plans and a lot of businesses that don't have a 401k unless they get kind of to around the 10 employee account or more are paying more in fees because they're small. 
So it costs more for a Fidelity or for a Schwab to administer it. So they charge them more. So there's an expense ratio. And usually if you look at, there's a lot of math out there and there's a lot of history out there, but the average small employer pays around two and a half percent in fees annually, where a big corporation like a Harris in our area or Northrop Grumman, uh, they're more around the one percent a year in fee structure. Um, so there's a big difference because those annual fees are charged internally. So you don't see them, but they're still a real cost. So basically the same invested portfolio is going to earn one and a half percent less growth per year. In your experience, what causes more damage to a 401k plan? Is it forgetting about it and it becoming like an orphan account or the fees? Fees are a big problem, but orphaning is another big problem because if you forget about it, usually what happens is you'll look at it once a year when you get that kind of end of year statement that says this is where you're and when you look at it as long as it's not less than the prior year like well it's doing okay. No. That doesn't mean it's doing okay because if it only made one or two percent when the market was up 15 percent it's not doing well at all but people kind of just naturally feel that way if it unless it's really down or something like that and they will just kind of ignore it and it just sits there they don't have any idea what kind of fees they're paying because the old 401k platform actually gets more expensive when you leave the employer because now some of those internal fees the employer paid for you when you're no longer an employee you're now getting on your quarterly statement if you look at it there's now a quarterly fee being charged because you're no longer an employee so they actually go up in cost so typically some of those abandoned 401k accounts you're better to either combine them into your new 401k or roll them to an ira so you can lower some of those fees and how many people don't even realize that they're not with that employer anymore and like they add that fee on there yeah i mean most people don't have any idea what they're paying in fees Yep. They just don't know. So it's hard to find it. Um, there's a little bit out there. My savvy investors, so the people that are paying attention, kind of monitoring their own investments, or really do a good job, is only about 5% of the people that walk in our door. So out of 100 people that come in to see us at McPherson Financial Group, five are actually adequate on that mm -hmm. and kind of have a really good handle on how to trade, how to watch, how to manage. But the rest of them, they don't even know typically. It's the importance of taking advantage of that complimentary consultation, which includes that 401k x-ray. Arb McPherson and the team at the McPherson Finance Group want to sit down with you, take a deep dive into your 401k plan to see what adjustments need to be made. That initial consultation, no cost, no obligation to you this weekend. 321-425- 8550. Over the past week and a half, Art McPherson, baseball is back, and it feels like all is right in the world once again. Even for you? I get to be a fan. <laughs> so if you're new to the art of money and full transparency, I'm at the mothership here just north of Atlanta in Kennesaw, Georgia, while Art is down on the Space Coast. That's where we do the show every weekend. And for the past 16 seasons, I have been with the Atlanta Braves as their in-game host. I just hung it up. I just retired at the end of the 2022 season. And Art, I finally got to go to my first home baseball game as a fan. The first time I got to have a pregame beer since 2006. <laughs> Without having to run across the whole field. <laughs> Without being on a clock or have a schedule, I got to be a fan. And it was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it was for you. I mean, for almost 20 years being in that stadium and being the voice of the stadium and seeing your face all over this big screen and you're down on the field with players and then back up in the box and back down on the field. You were running in and out of the rows. Yep. When I went to see you up there last year with Julie, it was fun watching you. I mean, you were all over that stadium. I was shocked at how far you ran. I was like, geez. You'd think you I'd were... be in better shape, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's the beer. <laughs> it's the beer. <laughs> but but it, it was it's truly it was an amazing moment like you know I was born and raised to Braves fans I've lived here in Atlanta my whole life so to be able to work for the team and be a part of that 2021 World Series run now you know you may hate the Braves but think about your baseball fandom like to be a part of an experience like that for a kid that has zero athletic ability and to live vicariously through the team and be part of that was amazing but I hung it up you know to focus more on family to focus more on my full time job. And Art, I'll tell you, it really was weird, but I'm not used to those things called lines. <laughs> you mean for food and beer? <laughs> and to get in 
And do, and why do I have to wait in line to go to the bathroom? <laughs> like, why is there a line in the men's room? Because there's a lot of people drinking beer. Unacceptable. <laughs> Unac- do y'all not know who I am? <laughs> but it was, it, we did, we really had a good time. And I can get used to this fandom a lot. I can get used, because the best part on top of all that, uh, Art, we left in the seventh inning. Yeah, see, that's what, could never do that before. It's not cheap, though. The average ticket price this year, around 30 bucks. I think it's more expensive than that. But once you go to the game, or the average fan is going to spend, you know, another 50, 100 bucks, depending on if you go to the clubhouse store, mm-hmm. depends on how many cold ones you get. Parking, merchandise, you know, you want to get koozie to go with you. So if you only hit five or so games a season, I mean, that's 500 bucks. Just yeah, for, for entertainment sure. expenses. So let me ask you this, R. McPherson here. So being there in person is just awesome. But is it a better investment to take that entertainment money and invest it into something? Or do you subscribe to the theory of go live your life? Uh, both. So, yes, it's a better investment, obviously, taking that amount of money and investing it because it's going to grow over time. You're going to see that money grow and compound, right? So over a 20 or 30 year period, it could become tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, But the therapy of being able to get out there with your daughter, with your wife, with your buddies, having fun, a little bit of a download time so you can hit it hard the next day or the next few days at work um, is kind of priceless. Remember those old Visa commercials that would do that where, you know, you're playing around a golf, it showed the cost, you know, you're, you have your son with you, um, and then it says, you know, all the little costs and fees of everything, but then it, you hit a hole in one, and he's there to witness it, or he hits a hole in one, and you're there to witness it. And they Round of priceless. golf, $100. Lunch at the clubhouse, $50. Round right. of golf with your son, priceless. Yeah, exactly. So those kind of things are what we're talking about. So you you have an opportunity to be there with your daughter. Now, if you're doing that and then you're going to a concert every week and then you're going to do this every week, so you're spending, let's say, four or $5,000 a month in discretionary spending, could you take 500 of that and apply it to long-term savings? Absolutely. However, you know, you want to balance it. So we don't know. I mean, you know, we could drive tomorrow and be in a car accident and no longer be here. So you can't save everything you have for a rainy day that may never come. However, when we're talking about retirement planning and we're talking about income planning, we're going to save enough money aside to be able to create that retirement nest egg. And what we're really designing is You need to be able to retire with the same income while working. So if Mark is used to $15,000 a month, I need to have enough stashed away with that big pension you're going to get from the Braves. We got to make sure you have other money besides that. And all that money needs to be stashed away so you can continue that same retirement income. Wait, tell me more about this pension that I'm not getting. (laughs) Oh, you don't have one. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why do you You're just like a regular me? American that just has Social Security. <laughs> you, want, you want to hear a secret? I was actually, uh, for the Braves, I was a part-time hourly employee for 16 years. I swiped in and Oof. swiped out just like the the ushers and the security and the hot dog throwers. I So I loved it. Blue collar worker all the way. Never did it for the money. Did it for those experiences. But I see what you're saying there. Like, you know, in my case, I'm not going to go to every game and spend two, three hundred dollars. Like you got to go to some of these games and budgets. So it's the same way with the experiences of go live your life, but also do it on a budget. Right. Well, just make sure you have one. There's a lot of people that have a lot of discretionary money and they don't really budget that. So they'll just kind of do what they want, which is fine, but they're not saving much either. They're only putting 6% in the 401k because that's what their employer matches. Mm. When really they should be doing 10, 12, 15% or even more because they can afford to do it. And some of the people when they're making really good income and you get up there where you're both making 150,000 or more a year, you can actually maximize that 401k. And this year, if you're over 50, and I think we both are, Mark, you can put the catch-up provision applied, and you can actually put $30,000 now this year for you and also for your wife into a 401k. That's $60,000 a year you can put aside and have that non-taxable, or you can have half of it taxable and go to a Roth and the other as an IRA. But there's just all kinds of neat strategies where you can actually save a lot of tax revenue on that if you need to, because you have enough income to be able to do it. So there's lots of neat things to do with retirement savings. So it's fun to watch that money grow. It's fun to watch it compound. But it's also fun to be able to go to the ball game and it's be able to fun to have a good time. 
hey, all right, be gentle, okay? I, I grunt and groan on the golf course like I'm 50, but I'm not there yet, all right? Oh, okay. I still well, make a lot right. of noise just standing up out of my chair. That's but right. I'm still You're in mid-40s. My, You're I'm still mid-40s. In, I know I act like I'm 65 sometimes. <laughs> the way I just, I get up in the morning and everything pops. I'll tell you, 321-425-8550, artofmoneyradio.com. Art, you know, we're talking about having a budget when it comes to expenses as well. And my father-in-law, he used to always have a phrase. We'd go play golf and he'd buy a dozen Titleists, which are always like 50 bucks. Or we'd go to an event and he'd buy a couple extra t-shirts. And he'd always say, eh, it's just money. There'll always be more. And there's part of me that thinks that's a great way to live. But then there was part of me, every time I heard that, I would just cringe. Because you as a financial advisor, Art McPherson, you heard somebody that just says, eh, it's just money. There will always be more. Does that make you cringe a little bit? No, it's just I think the perspective is money doesn't rule me kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. However, you have got to make sure that you're going to be fine. There's not a lot out there anymore that supports people for retirement. We don't have the pensions, just like you don't have a pension. Yeah. Or you work for a company for 16 years and you had no benefits, you know, no pension benefits or and things like that. So. You've got to be able to put that money aside on your own. You've got to take the reins and you've got to put that aside. Instead of spending every dollar that comes in the door, you save some of it. And it's funny, you adjust to it. You know, it's not that hard to do living on 90% of what you make instead of 100% or living on 80% of what you make instead of 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause once you adjust to it, you're fine. You know, you're just used to it. You know, that's, that's the money you're living on and you still have money that you're spending every month. You're just not spending every dollar for discretionary. You're spending some of that for savings. Three, two, one, four, two, five. 8550. The importance of having a strategy and most importantly, having a plan. The team at the McPherson Financial Group, they want to sit down with you and customize that strategy and that initial consultation, no cost, no obligation to you. And Art, when we say no obligation, that means you're not required to become a client within the first meeting. That happens a couple of meetings down the road. Absolutely. Our normal process is two or three meetings before anybody needs to make a decision because we want to make sure the fit's good for them and the fit's good for us. Obviously, we want to make sure that they're happy and our investment style, kind of our theory on investing for them, they feel like they're going to get value added out of that. I want them to know and appreciate all the different things we're going to be able to do for them. So sometimes somebody will come in and they're not quite ready, but they're back in a year or they're back in two years and then they're ready to go and we're really off and running. Sometimes we're just not the right fit for somebody. Um, they're kind of a do it yourselfer and they're like, yeah, I think I can still do it myself right now. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people really love the fact that we can not only help them with their finances and help them with their wealth management, but we can also help them with taxes and also do tax planning, which is why I wrote the book, obviously. Nothing is certain until uh, except death death and taxes until now. And we should give five of those out, Mark, since we bring it up. But the reason I wrote that book was to show people there's a lot more than just asset allocation and diversifying your money. You want to be very tax efficient with that money. And then also having the estate planning side. So we have attorneys here that they can get their will and their trust and things done like that. We kind of have the full service, you know, from soup to nuts, so to speak, uh, for financial planning. That's great this weekend. So take advantage of it. It's a complimentary copy of Art McPherson's book. It's called Nothing is Certain But Death and Taxes Until Now. Now, traditionally, you'll get a copy when you schedule that in Initial consultation, but this weekend exclusively for our radio audience, the next five callers, it's a complimentary copy of Art's book, 321-425-8550. One more time, 321-425-8550. And Art McPherson, there was one strategist at JP Morgan that says he believes the market will retest last year's lows in the coming months. Well, apparently that means a drop of another 3,000 points. So I know you don't have that crystal ball at the McPherson Financial Group, but I mean, we read a headline like that. That's a little terrifying. You don't like it when the money goes down in the market? Not a big fan of that. No, can't say that I am. (laughs) Well, you're young enough. That's okay. You know, but you can absolutely strategize for that. So one of the things you can do is, you know, get a little more defensive, you know, so instead of buying aggressive growth, small cap, mid cap, international, that kind of stuff, get a little bit of value plays, you know, get things that are produced dividends. So when you have a lot of volatility in the market 
those dividends come in, they can buy more shares for you because you're not retired yet, so you're not taking those dividends out. So high dividend paying ETFs or mutual funds are very good during a volatile session. Um, so there's things you can do to kind of shift the allocations internally um, and get a little more bonds in there, things like that. Bonds should still perform pretty well over this period because the Fed is for the most part done with their raising effort. Um, so we should have bonds rally or at least perform better than stock even if we have a correction in this period. It's always possible though, Mark, that's the problem is you've got an economy that's slowing down because a lot of the economic policies we have right now are more the green energy movement policies. So so what that means is they're, they're doing environmental type policies, which sometimes are very heavy tax on any kind of company that is with coal or any kind of company that's with fossil fuels. Well, fossil fuels are in everything. And if you don't think oil is based on anything, anything you touch that's plastic, that's an oil-based product. So when oil is a lot more expensive right now, it makes everything more expensive. So having cheap energy, cheap fuel is a really great way to lower costs, but it's just not on the table right now. We have to import our fuel again. I don't, that's another policy decision that our government has made right now. So that's making things more expensive. And when you kind of have headwinds like that, you know, we're poised for possible growth, but we've had some of that first quarter of this year. It wouldn't surprise me if we have another correction. And I even have some people saying we could have as much as a 50% correction. So we'll see who's right, but you want to make sure you can ride through that because if you're retiring this year, that could be bad timing. Yeah, protecting your assets and building retirement income. And, and, and I know that our, you don't have that crystal ball. You can't see what's going to happen in the future, but you do have the power of hindsight. And you mentioned there that bonds could be on their way back up. Do you think that bonds may be worth a second look right now? Yeah, because typically when interest rates rise, it always is hard on bonds. Well, we're kind of hitting that plateau right now. So the next couple months, I think we're done with the Fed raising. I think their last one will be here in May at a quarter percent, and then they'll be done. And then most of the experts or a lot of our forward guidance from the Fed themselves and also the market's expectation is negative rates, you know, rates falling from this point forward. So that means bonds should be in a in really good position. So they should outperform. 321-425-85. Five zero. If you're hearing it on this weekend show, you need some clarity on that initial consultation. No cost, no obligation to you from Mark McPherson and the team at the McPherson Financial Group, 321-425-8550. And Art, I'm sure you've run across people who think that they can DIY. They can plan their own retirement by playing the stock market. But I want you to hear this clip from financial expert John Tobacco. Uh, great name, by the way. He tells the Michael Savage show that the market is actually controlled by others. People don't realize that 85 percent of the volume in the stock market is generated by bots and algorithms and black boxes. And, you know, look, I've been no stranger of going out to Atlantic City or Vegas and having a fun night and coming back to the casino half drunk. And then you go in there, you're uninhibited, you're careless, reckless, et cetera. The, all the odds are against you if you're sober. So it's even worse. And I feel like when people go in and try to trade for profit, not invest for the long term, but trade for profit, it's a David versus Goliath battle. I guarantee that guy at three in the morning has said, all right, give me an eight. Let's go eight. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> so coming off of what John said there, I mean, how do, how do people learn the hard way that playing the stock market can really be a big gamble? Well, I think what he's talking about there is – there's a big difference between trying to trade to make money or letting you know you buy or allocate for the long run and he's talking about you're trying to go in and out of stocks you're trying to go in and out of mutual funds or ETFs to create profit you know annualize it very very difficult to do um, especially for a small investor mm -hmm. and usually what happens with the typical small investor is they get very emotional so when the market gets really nasty and negative they don't want to be in it they want to be away from it where that a lot of times is the opportunity for buying opportunities and it's hard to buy if you feel like you're throwing good money after bad at times but you've got to have money on the sidelines to be able to buy so you can't have all your money in when everything's running up you got to start pulling some of that profit off the table so that when we do have correction times because those do happen you want to be able to buy during those corrections three two one four two five eight five five zero this is not something that you could do exclusively by yourself i know art you've said before a lot of 
people do a DIY approach to retirement planning, but the opportunity to have the help of somebody who's been doing this for over 30 years, someone in your corner to make sure you're making the right decisions. That's Art McPherson and the team at the McPherson Financial Group, 321 425 8550 artofmoneyradio.com. You can schedule that consultation online in just a few clicks from the homepage. And before we get out of here, you know, one of the goals here every weekend here on the Art of Money is to help you set you up for a happy retirement. And retiring early may sound great, but the question is, are you really ready for it? This young lady was on TikTok and she retired at the age of 54. Not very excited about it. I can tell you that retiring early wasn't the dream for me. And as luxurious as it sounds to sleep in every single day, it's not. I had always loved Fridays, but when you have suddenly six Saturdays and a Sunday, Friday loses its magic. And when Friday lost its magic, I lost my sparkle. Have you heard that before? I mean, it's one thing to say, I mean, we have the finances that I can retire early, but then what's next? What are you retiring to? (laughs) Yes, I have heard that. And there is, you know, you can kind of get a little lost from a standpoint of can you go out there and be busy? You know, because you don't want to just sleep in, be lazy where you're not really feeling fulfilled. Right. Right. Getting up, having something to do, accomplishing the day and the task. I think that's kind of what she was saying there. And then she probably loved getting ready for work, looking good, having good outfits, you know, looking nice for the day. And then Friday, she was looking to go out with all her friends, girlfriends, all that kind of stuff. Well, guess what? That changed because she was not feeling like she would get up and get ready and all that. So it was just every day became a Saturday. And then Saturday is usually a day we dress down. We're kind of working around the house. Well, that gets boring if it's every day, right? Mm-hmm. So you want to have a hobby. You want to have things you can do. Most of our clients are playing pickleball. They're playing golf. They're sailing. They're boating. They're going to the Bahamas, they're going to Bimini, they're doing all kinds of cool stuff, or they're taking their motor home, they're traveling across the U.S., they're seeing kids, grandkids, they're having a blast. But they're also busy, because when you have a motor home, things break. When you have a boat, things break. When you have old cars, like Julie's old truck, things break, and I got to fix it for her. So uh, when you have uh, clubs and you're golfing, you break them, you know, especially when you your buddy... Uh, is playing with you and he hits a tree because he's behind the tree and he whacks it. All right, Mark look, did. Yeah, well, uh, okay, that's not necessary. <laughs> I've put all my business out there all the time. But it does pose the question, what am I retiring to? If that includes being horrible at golf, well, I'll see you on the ninth green at nine. Three, two, one, four, two, five, eight, five, five, zero, artofmoneyradio.com. Thanks for listening. Want more from Art McPherson of McPherson Financial Group? Find us online at artofmoneyradio.com. We are an independent financial services firm helping individuals create retirement strategies using a variety of financial and insurance products to custom suit their needs and objectives. Securities offered through World Equity Group, Inc., member FINRA and SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Investment advisory services offered through ProStatus Group, LLC. McPherson Financial Group and ProStatus Group, LLC are separate entities and are not owned or controlled by World Equity Group, Inc. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Investment financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. Art McPherson is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Please consult with your attorney, accountant, and or tax advisor for advice concerning your particular circumstances. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Arthur McPherson. Florida Insurance License Number A1 74725. Today's show has been a work of art.